For the rest of the day and night, I helped the others with random things around the house. I heard a lot more about P-21 once he got used to me being around, and a little about the life he used to live in Stable 99. He was amazed how different my stable was once I told him about it. He even said he wished he could have seen the place. Until I told him what happened to it. Scotch tape was almost like a mix of wingnut and bite, I came to find out. I spent three hours with her that night, letting her look at my Mark II. Of course, that was after she bribed me with some sparkle cola, and an old memory orb she found she was hiding from Blackjack. She said something about Blackjack spending too much time in them. Scotch was able to show me how to do things with my Mark II that I had never even thought about. Faster ways to access my broadcaster, how to boost its signal so I could use the intercom connection system easier, ways to make my sats last longer. She even found the spot where I'd access the system to take the Mark II off if I ever needed to, and if I ever got my hooves on a master key. She found notes and recordings I never saw while I was messing around with it, and even a spot on the Mark II where I could find out how many terminals or systems it has locked down. By the time I was done with her, I had a lot more respect for the cranky little filly. Glory, though, was the most interesting one of them all, at least to me. Scotch kept saying she was boring, which normally ended up with some kind of argument. From what I could tell about Glory, she wasn't too much older than me. At least with her bouts of immaturity, I thought as much. I enjoyed her company because she was an enclave pony, and not one that was trying to kill me or a member of my family. She told me a lot about how the politics worked in the clouds and how the rest of the Enclave saw my home. The Crystal Empire was a jewel of some kind to the rest of the Enclave. If it wasn't for the alliance of Stratus and Nimbus, the Crystal Empire would have been another cloud city. It's controlled by now. She told me about a city called Thunderhead. Uh, but i never been able to prove it. It was called Cirrus. The rest of the Enclave thought it was a place where both Stratus and Nimbus kept all their military secrets, or firepower. Because of this, none of the other cities dared to attack the West. I thought the Cirrus city was just a myth that Stardust, or Stratus and Nimbus, cooked up to keep themselves safe. But I couldn't be sure. I'd have to ask my dad about it when I saw him next. After that, they all went to bed. But I found myself once again lying awake on the couch downstairs. Glory tried to give me something that should help me sleep, and honestly, I tried to. Then another nightmare came to me. This time, it was Mom's head rolling off her shoulders as misery cut through her neck. I woke up screaming and spent the next hour with Glory trying to calm me down as nightmare after nightmare hit me. My dreams became death, and I wanted to stay as far away from them as I could. The next day, I found myself back in chapel at Charity's shop with Boo and Scotch Tape. Boo mostly because she kept following me around. Glory said it might be because she thought I was Blackjack with different colors, since I was the only other unicorn mare Boo had met. Still, I didn't mind. I kind of liked the white mare. Scotch was just finished going over some plans for chapel with charity, but I was finally able to ask her what I needed to do. She looked at me over, saying, So, what do you need today, Shadow? If you take too long to answer, I'm going to charge you an extra ca caps for loitering. Ten caps a minute. I just wanted to ask if whomever owned this shop before you took it over ever said anything about a dashite named Stalker leaving something behind here? I asked. It depends upon how long ago that was. I've run this place for a long time, she said. For five years? I asked, knowing that she couldn't have because of her age. Huh, yeah, not that long. Hell, Chapel wasn't even around the back then. But still, that name sounds familiar. Charity said, getting off her counter and going back to check the ledger she kept behind the counter. Ah, here it is. He stopped in once a few years back. The shop was nothing more than a wannabe store. But he did keep his shit written down. Says here that he paid a ton of caps to have something kept here until he could come back for it. Is it still here? I asked. Unless it was never written down, then yes. Has been for at least four and a half years. Shit, wish I was running this place back then. That's a lot of caps to pay for storage. Though after all that time, I guess it makes sense. Charity said. So, why do you want to know? Because I'd like those notes. 
or whatever was in the stuff striker left here? I replied. Charity jumped back onto the counter and glared down at me. I may not have been a pony to take the payment for this, but I was still left here to keep it safe, and only to be given to Stryker or a family member who he didn't name. I can't just give you it because you want it. I laughed a little. Well, it's a good thing Stryker's my uncle, because I'm not leaving without it. How do I know if you're telling the truth? Charity asked. Um, because I know he left it here, and how would I know where he left it? I asked, though once the words were out, I felt stupid. Charity seemed to agree. Yeah, no, I can't just go off of that. Well then, how can I prove it to you? I asked. She jumped down and looked at another ledger, then said, Says here that if Stryker didn't come for this, then his family members should know the true name of his great-grandfather from the war. And don't try peeking. I'm not going to let you see the answer. So Stryker did know more than most Enclave about Night Stalker then. He smiled and said without hesitation, Absent Moon. Charity blinked back at me and asked, Did you have luck? No, he's my distant grandfather too. Though his name isn't well known to most ponies, so I could see why it be used as a good passcode, I responded. She shrugged. Fine. At least you'll free up some space in my vault. She went to the back room. When she was gone, I looked back at Scotch Tape, who was looking over some new tool she'd gotten. She has a vault? No idea. It's not like she doesn't let me back there, Scotch said, not even looking back at me. A moment later, Cherry jumped back on the counter and dropped a large folder in front of me, then a box, saying, That's all there was. Take it before I make you pay me for how long it was here. I did, not wanting to mess with the filly. She scared me a little, even when she was being nice. Thanks, Charity. Careful with the box. It has, like, three or four memory orbs in it. I don't think you want to get stuck in those, she said. I lifted the box and looked inside and saw that she was right. Four memory orbs were laying on top of some old papers to keep the box padded. Two had a dark purple glow to them, one was the normal silver I'd seen in most. The other was a light blue. I tucked them both away for now. At least they would be nice to have while I was traveling. After another thank you to Charity, I headed for the door. I was just about to close it when she said, Oh, and I forgot. I got word from Bottle Cap. Captain Gunny will be here to pick you up soon. He'll be landing near Star House. Oh, good. Thanks for letting me know, I said. She didn't respond, so I just headed out of the shop. Boo followed, and Scotch leading the way back to her house. So I guess you'll be out of here soon then, huh? Looks like it. Too bad. I'm gonna miss having you around. You're way more level-headed than the rest of the group, Scotch said as she turned towards Star House. I was about to say something when I heard some pony. No, make that some ponies lighting behind us. I knew that sound all too well. Pegasi in power armor. Turning slowly, I saw four of them, all with rifles aimed right for us. Slowly, I turned my head towards Scotch, saying, Get glory or P-21. Tell them the Enclave's here. None of you move. We're here on behalf of Captain Strife of Thunderhead and the Grand Pegasus Enclave. Small Mare, are you Shadow Star, also known as the Courier from New Pegasus? The stallion looked like he was leading them. If I say yes, are you going to shoot me or threaten me with pain and suffering like that? I asked. He either had no sense of humor or he was just ignoring me because he said, If you are the mayor we're looking for, then you are under arrest for crimes against the Enclave. I rolled my eyes. Nope. Name's Silver Snip. I'm visiting from Manhattan. A mayor next to him moved closer, saying, She's lying. Silver Snip was the name of the mayor friend. Shadows, mare friend, who has been dead for weeks now. That's her. Okay, how the hell do they know that? I frowned and took a step back. Sorry to disappoint you all, but I have a ship to catch. I really don't feel like playing today. The stallion growled. You aren't going anywhere, Shadow Star. You're wanted in Nimbus and Stratus, as well as Thunderhead for your crimes. 
If you come with us, we won't kill your two friends there. Funny, because last time I checked, my dad cleared me of any charges from the Enclave. You might know him. His name's High Council Pony Nightshade, I said, throwing my dad's name out there, hoping they would back off. I also hoped he didn't kill me himself for doing this. The mayor from before laughed. Nightshade won't be leading Stratus or Nimbus for much longer, kid. Even if you are his kid. You still broke our laws, and now you're being taken in for those crimes. Captain Strife has issued a, this himself, along with her brother, Winter Thrust. You killed three High Council ponies, and you can't run from that. Mm, I sure can, I said, pulling my shotgun from its holster and firing. All four ponies dodged the shot, and I took the moment to run, yelling, Scotch, boo, get back to the house now. They didn't have to be told twice. Both ponies bolted for the door, which wasn't far now. I ran the other way, away from the house and town. Shots from their battle saddles rang out, and I dodged to the one side. The laser is just missing me. I wasn't in good shape right now for a fight, with my lack of sleep and the magic Aquila still used still having effect on me. All I could do was hope that I could get far enough away from them to find help. And that wasn't until two landed in front of me with their battle saddles charging and ready to fire. One was that mare. She grinned, saying, Unicorns are so stupid. Almost as bad as dirt ponies. I pointed my shotgun at them, ready to go down fighting. I wasn't going to let the Enclave get a hold of me. Not after I put up with the fucking sins. Another shot rang out, followed by another. In a matter of a few breaths, three of the ponies fell with a bullet flying through the small gaps in their visors. I looked around for the shooter, saying, What the hell? The mayor was doing the same. Who the hell just killed three of my pegasi? Then we heard some pony whistling a merry tune from just up the road. I looked towards the sound and saw it was the strangest pony I'd ever laid eyes on. He was a stallion with a vivid purple coat. His mane was a tangle of ebony locks, done in some jagged and spiky dreadlocks. A tricorn hat tucked under his head. He had slow burning match cords shoved into the hat. Burning and also in the tangled, uneven beard. His eyes were strange too. One was bright blue, the other gold. He was wearing a long coat with boots on his hooves, and a special rigged battle saddle with a long rifle on it. His grin told me that he was either crazy, or wanted the world to think that he was. He chuckled to himself and spoke in a deep, drawing voice. Ah, Captain Gunny has done it again. Three for three, and with only a small tilt to the far left. I meant to get the last one in the ass. Captain Gunny knew Captain Gunny shouldn't have trusted that traitor in flank with his sights. I says that only Captain Gunny can fit a sight on his rifle perfectly. But nah, the kid wanted to prove himself. Sad lot, that one. Sad lot. Now what do we have here? Who the fuck are you? The mayor yelled, turning to point her battle saddle at him. Captain Gunny, at your acquaintance. No, that ain't right. No, no, it's at your service. Can't be right, either Captain Gunny isn't here to service her, though she is a fine-looking mare, even with all that armor cover in her tiddly bits, and what not. The stallion said, Wait, this is Captain Gunny? I don't care who you are. You shot my pegasi. You're going to pay for that, she yelled. Right, but first can Captain Gunny ask you a boon? You by chance ain't shadow something or other, are you? He asked, I think. That's me. She's an Enclave soldier trying to kill me. Or take me to the Enclave for the bounty. I said. Ah, yes. Bottle said you was a unicorn. He said, then turned back to the mare. Sorry, love, but Captain Gunny has made a deal with this mare to take her someplace far from here. Doesn't matter. She's mine, the mare said. Then her head whipped back as a bullet flew clean through her skull. She talks too much, Captain Gunny said pushing a button on his battle saddle. As I watched, it retracted into his back. Still, a little too much to the left. Damn. I took a step back, saying, So you're the one bottle cap sent? He bowed low. Captain Gunny at your service, Shadow something. 
I'll be taking you to the bitter cob right haste. Don't you mean right away? Or did you mean post haste? I couldn't help asking. Tis all in the way you look at its shadow, something, he said. It's Shadow Star, I said, getting annoyed already at this nut job. Ah, yes, Shadow Star, or something like that. That was the name old Captain Gunny was told to look after. We best be going. Got a lot to go, and even more rum to drink, he said, turning to leave. Before he could, Glory, P-21, and Scotch all came running. Glory saying, Shadow, Scotch said you were in trouble? What the hell happened here? It's okay now, I said. This is Captain Gunny. He's my ride. Glory and the others all looked a little confused, but she managed to say, So wait, you're leaving? No time like the time of now, Gunny said with a chuckle. He was going to be oh, so much fun to travel with. Oh well, at least I have memory orbs. I sighed and looked back at Glory. Yeah, or will be waiting for me and I really do need to get home. She smiled a little, then pulled me into a hug. It was nice to meet you, Shadow. I wish you didn't have to go so soon. I hugged her back. Me too, but that's how life goes. Maybe one day Blackjack and the rest of you can visit me in New Pegasus. If things calm down here, maybe, P-21 said, nodding at me. Have a safe trip, Shadow. Scotch, to my surprise, hugged me too. Don't go letting evil shit in your head out again. I'm glad I got the chance to meet you. Same here, Scotch, I said, then looked back at Glory. Try to forgive Blackjack and tell her how you feel. I'm sure if you try hard enough, things will work out for the better. She blushed a little, then nodded. I'll think about it. You just get home safe and make sure you try and get some sleep. I hugged her, then said my goodbyes. In all honesty, I wasn't really ready to go all just yet. I like these ponies. They made me feel more grounded than ever, and something about this place kept Aquila at bay. If the city wasn't so dangerous, then I would just say to hell with New Pegasus and move back here with all my friends. Sadly, I knew that I couldn't do that. I had responsibilities back at home, and a heavy leather duster to dawn again. I turned back to Captain Gunny, and he gave me a crazy grin. Okay, you old crazy pony, let's get back to New Pegasus. Now that's the spirit Captain Gunny likes to see. Follow me, the bitter cobs just on the other side of that hill. He said, then looked down at the bodies of the Enclave soldiers, then back at Glory and her friends. Don't worry about the mess. Got a clean-up crew a-coming. And with that, the Earth Pony walked away, laughing like he didn't have a single care in the world. I couldn't help but laugh myself as I followed him. He might be crazy, but he did just save my life, and maybe he wasn't that annoying for... a pirate, I guess? I really hope that his ship was an airship of some kind, because I really didn't want to take weeks to get home. <clears throat> and I couldn't deal with an Earth Pony calling himself a Sky Pirate, only to find out that his carriage, a ship. Either way, at least I was one step closer to getting home. I got my uncle's notes. Mom may have found a way to get a quill out of me. I was going to see Aura again soon, and maybe I made no new friends. Maybe going to Hoovington, even for a short time, wasn't so bad. And I had no idea how wrong I was. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Lone Wanderer. You're getting better at wandering the wasteland on your own four hooves. As much as you like to travel with your friends, sometimes you just have to go it alone. Gain plus one to strength and endurance when you're traveling on your own.